compared to Jesus, the Dajjal is a false messiah. He is the Antichrist, as he is the opposite of Jesus in many ways. The Dajjal is a major sign of the apocalypse. His arrival will signify that the world is nearing its end. The last century has been truly turbulent for mankind. Global wars and conflict. Weapons with an ever increasing capacity for destruction. Natural disasters on a colossal scale. Plagues that sweep the earth. These are just some of the great tribulations that have impacted millions in recent history. But all of these events will pale in comparison to the horrors of the coming Dajjal. Dajjal is an Arabic word that means deceiver or liar. Mankind has been warned about the great dangers of the Dajjal since the beginning of time. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that every single prophet that was ever sent by God informed their people about the Dajjal. To fully comprehend the Dajjal, we must first understand who Jesus is, as these two individuals are inextricably linked. Muslims believe in Jesus, who Islam teaches is a great prophet and messenger sent by God. He is also the Messiah, meaning chosen one, the salvific figure sent to redeem the children of Israel. God granted him many miracles, such as feeding multitudes and healing the sick. Despite such signs and wonders, he was rejected by the majority of the children of Israel and had only a handful of followers. Compared to Jesus, the Dajjal is a false messiah. He is the Antichrist, as he is the opposite of Jesus in many ways. The Dajjal is a major sign of the apocalypse. His arrival will signify that the world is nearing its end. He will be sent by God as a test, the greatest of trials for mankind. In his possession will be the treasures of the earth, mountains of gold, silver, jewels, Every material thing that mankind desires will be with him in abundance. The weather will be at his command. He can make the heavens open up and the clouds pour forth with rain, so that crops grow and are plentiful. Likewise, he will also be able to withhold the rain, causing drought and killing crops. With these abilities, he will create a great dependency on himself and attract the masses who will flock to him. Eventually, he will declare himself to be God and will be worshipped as such. In this way, much of mankind will be deceived, selling their hereafter for worldly gain and ending up in the fire. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, warned us to stay away from the Dajjal. He said that a Muslim will go to the Dajjal considering themselves a believer and will end up following the Dajjal because of the miracles on display. God's ultimate test with regards to the Dajjal is to see who will heed the warnings of the prophets to stay away from him and who will follow and worship him. Now you may be thinking that the Dajjal is some far off threat that will happen long after you're dead and buried, so why worry about it? But the reality is that our hearts and minds are already being conditioned and programmed to accept the message of the Dajjal and many of us don't even realize it. New Atheism, which is a liberal atheistic movement that has been sweeping the West for the last few decades, is priming the world for the Dajjal's arrival. What are the principles of New Atheism? Firstly, the rejection of religion. Religion is undermined through mockery and the normalization of blasphemy. Secondly, empiricism. This is the idea that one should only believe in what can be experienced through the senses. If something cannot be seen, touched, smelt or heard, then it cannot be accepted. God and all aspects of the supernatural are therefore rejected. Thirdly, materialism. Emphasizing worldly matters above the spiritual and claiming superiority based on scientific and technological advances. This unholy trinity of new atheism, the rejection of religion, the emphasis on empiricism, 
and the increase in materialism is exactly the fodder that the Dajjal needs to create dependency on himself, attract the masses as followers, and ultimately be worshipped as God. Just how does the atheist denial of the supernatural benefit the Dajjal? Doesn't that go against his agenda of being worshipped as God? No, this actually fits in perfectly with his master plan. People who disbelieve in God and have rejected all aspects of the supernatural, just imagine how they're going to react when they see the Dajjal. They're going to lose their minds, and no doubt they will accept his claim of divinity without question, because they'll be witnessing things they cannot comprehend. They'll be taken by surprise and snared in his trap. With regards to empiricism, the Dajjal will satisfy the atheist demand that they see God. If they're demanding a physical God, well, that's what the Dajjal is going to be. Defying all scientific explanation by performing signs and wonders before their very eyes. With regards to materialism, those inclined towards greed, those inclined towards selfishness, shall join his ranks. Sound far-fetched? In recent pandemics, we've seen people going crazy, literally fighting, over simple creature comforts like toilet paper. Now just imagine how anxious people will become when essentials for life, such as food, water and shelter, are taken away. Now, whether the new atheist movement is a knowing accomplice and in on some grand conspiracy, or whether it is an unwitting pawn in the Dajjal's game is beside the point. As we have seen, there is an uncanny correlation between the ideology they are pushing and the methodology of the Dajjal. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, taught that in order to protect ourselves against the Dajjal, we should recite the first 10 verses of the chapter of the Quran known as Al-Kahf, the cave. The ninth verse of the chapter of the cave draws our attention to a particular story known as the sleepers of the cave. This story relates to some youths who lived in a land of idolatry. Out of their strong devotion to God, they fled from their people. The verses go on to say, This shows us that faith is the most precious and important thing in our lives. It must be safeguarded and protected at all costs. With regards to the Dajjal, it will be best to stay away from him, even if it means fleeing to a remote cave. Here we are directed to avoid the worship of idols, statues, carved images, human beings, and anything besides God. This goes directly against the Dajjal's plot to be worshipped as God. Note here the theme of belief in the unseen and putting your trust in and relying on God. This goes directly against the empiricism of new atheism. In fact, if you look at this chapter of the Quran as a whole, many of its themes and messages are a counter to the Dajjal and new atheism. For example, the story of the man and the garden. <laughs> Here the man who possessed beautiful and bountiful gardens believed that he was superior to those who had less than him. 
This reminds us of the arrogant new atheist narrative that we are superior to the religious people of the past just because we lead more comfortable lives and have better possessions. Our worth as a society should not be measured in material terms such as wealth and technology, but rather how we treat the weakest and most vulnerable. In this regard, the modern world is failing miserably. Finally, these verses remind us that material things are temporal and one should not put their trust solely in them to the extent that they neglect God. By contrast, the hereafter is eternal, everlasting. In summary, we can see that the plots of the Dajjal and the pillars of new atheism are explicitly denied throughout this chapter of the Quran. It's important to understand the reason why the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, directed us to the chapter of the cave for protection. It is not blind recitation, nor the sounds of the words that will protect us. Rather, it's the study of its verses, the contemplation of its meaning, and the enactment of its lessons in our lives that will protect us. To learn more about the Dajjal and signs of the end times, please download your free copy of the book, The Forbidden Prophecies, at the link below.